I think we're live. We are live. Look at us. Hey, Jen, we're live. We're live? We're live. Are, are there people out there? Why am I, I usually we're... like a cousin? Yeah, but I think we're live. I would, I would say we're live. Hi, everybody. I think I'm going to put it in the chat that we're live. Oh, but our videos froze. Okay, hello, welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought... Lyman usually introduces us. I was just hanging out and yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is episode, what, 10 maybe of the Office 365 Cult. Um, so we're working on doing a few things, um, trying to get the uh, recordings all in one spot so you can watch previous shows and then working on um, some new formats and stuff like that. So hopefully next week we'll have an update for you guys on that. Um, today's guest is Jason Himmelstein, and he is uh, joining us from his, I guess, second or third week this at week Rack three. Space. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Big so week three. We are in the Rack Space offices here at the Castle. We probably picked the most boring conference room to do this video call from, though. Well, it is the Beatles conference room, and so it the, the wall has the Beatles on it, but and the we other, choose that wall. The other wall looks guys, like prison, so yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. So, um, I will turn the mouse over to you. Oh, well, it's the same thing. So, we are going to go through today. Jason, do you want to tell us a little bit about you and what you do and all of the changes that are going on in your life, I guess? Absolutely. Well, anybody who was with us last week, uh, unfortunately you weren't, but uh, I not Dan Holm and I got to do the show last week uh, in Jen's uh, stand in honor. Uh, so for those of you who are returning, it's good to, good to talk to you again. Uh, I'm Jason Himmelstein. I'm SharePoint MVP currently from Nashville, New Hampshire, but uh, rapidly to relocate to uh, either San Antonio, sounds like San Antonio, uh, Texas. Uh, I am uh, now the Office 365 Advisor Services Manager for Rackspace, uh, and my world has definitely changed over the course of the past three weeks between uh, Ignite and coming on to a new job and getting to do all sorts of awesome stuff. I'm, it's my first week in Castle yeah. as a Rackspace employee, which is uh, a lot of fun. Actually, my happy moment of the day, I'll share this with you, uh, there are lots of fountain drink stations around the building. and everyone you find Dr. Pepper? I, well, no, I found Diet Coke. I had only seen Pepsi products so far, and I finally found the Diet Coke machine. I don't Coke even know machine. where, where's the Diet Coke? Over by the food vendor area. So oh. I went to lunch with Jeff Diverter, and I went to go pull up my, my drink and get Gatorade, because that's all I've been drinking since I got here, and I found that there was Diet Coke there. So that was my happy moment of the day, which is part of why I probably have a little bit more energy than, uh, than usual, because I have nice little caffeine going through my, my veins. So, yeah. I quit drinking soda before I moved to the castle. And then I moved to the castle, and soda is maybe every 20 feet here. Yeah. So. I, I, I've asked my boss if he can install an IV station to the desk, so yeah, he has not approved that requisition yet, but uh, yeah. I'm hoping that, that he will. So. Asking a lot on your first day. Yeah, you, you don't ask early. You're, not, you're never going to get it. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're never going to get that yeah, anyway. Probably. All right. You're all right. anyway, so it really <laughs> wouldn't work anyway. But. <laughs> awesome. Well. Onto this way, so we'll talk through some updates, and I know um, Mark put some questions into the chat room, so we'll kind of address that as we get past um, the rest of the stuff. Jason is about to share. Uh, Jason is about to share the sway. The sway. Sharing the sway. We are now sharing the sway. Okay. Neat. All right. So updates in the Office 365 world. Um, a couple of pretty cool ones that I think are pretty interesting. Uh, the first one is around usage reports. So um, rolling out in the next few months, I put that in air quotes because you know we all know what that looks like. Um, they're having Office 365 reporting dashboards, which are going to show your usage across the entire workload, which is pretty stinking awesome. So how many emails are you sending? What's your activity on site? How many people are using Yammer? All of this really cool stuff. 
they're doing um, a content pack for Power BI. Um, Power BI is pretty amazing, and some of the reports and stuff like that that you can do are um, just super easy. A great tool for Power users to be able to do things, so I'm excited about that one. And then a request that I think we have been asking for since day one, possibly before day one, before Office 365, we probably asked them for this. And that was, how about workload-specific admin roles? Because I might have someone who's an exchange engineer. They should manage exchange, but not really be able to change SharePoint and vice versa. So those are all coming um, very, very, very soon. So Jason, do you have anything to add to that or thoughts on that? Or? Well, my woohoo probably gave away my excitement around yeah, the, uh, the Power BI uh, <laughs> aspect of this. Uh, <clears throat> something that I've been asking for since Power BI was announced. Yeah. was I just want to see the data. That's I want the drill through, I want the double click drill downs. I want yeah, I want to be able to throw power map on there and be able to see where my users geographically are sitting and yeah, all sorts yep. of fun stuff that I can do with that. I want to be able to create dashboards that are viewable from my mobile device and be able to get all of that with just a couple of clicks and be able to flow through the data and have the reports that I want on a dashboard. Not just in some reports, but I want to have a dashboard that I can quickly go to see how my how my adoption is going, see how my engagement yeah. from the user perspective is, for me that was absolutely huge. So all the other things, the admin specific workloads are enormous. Um, you know, being able to segment your, your world a little bit more and not having any global admin rights to everybody is a really nice thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've long term, you know, being a SharePoint people, we've always said, you know, keep your, your farm admins to a minimum. Uh, same thing goes for Office 365, it'd be great to give global admin to to maybe three people as opposed to yeah, everybody who has to do everyone. everything. Yep. So yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah, no, I love that. And I believe that the Office 365 usage reports are actually running on Power BI, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, so they're running on the same piece. So they're utilizing that technology, which makes it easy to display, and they've got these different dashboards. So if you've played it all with the Power BI beta that's out there right now, or the BI Center, what's it? Is it oh, no, Power BI? Yeah. You can go to PowerBI.com, um, you can go sign up for free and give yeah, it a try. Yeah, and you can play with it and do some different reports. And so we did in our session at SPC, nope, it wasn't SPC, at our session at Ignite two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we um, uh, did a demo of that in one of the sessions I was doing, how we actually created a report with Power BI that was syncing back to SharePoint data. It wasn't a live sync because that data set isn't supported yet for a live sync back and forth, but it was um, showing how you could build reports um, and sometimes manual is okay. So we did that. So I thought that was really, really, really cool. So those are some updates coming over the next few months. I really hate how they do that because it's like, well, dang, when do I get to get to see it? But then I love it when they come out. So as soon as we get some access into that, we will um, show them for you guys. They actually haven't hit my 10 inch yet. So uh, have they hit any of yours? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I haven't hit my 10 inch yet. I'm hoping they will soon. Um, but haven't seen them yet. So that's one update. Next update is very cool for people wanting to uh, import large quantities of email and such to Office um, um, Office 365. So you can actually ship your physical hard drives to the Microsoft data centers, or you can upload the data over the network. I can't even imagine what uploading the data over the network would be like. So be prepared for a horrible experience, most likely, if you have a lot of big files to upload. Um, sending your physical hard drive, that could be an option for people as well. What I like about this one and what I think is interesting is this is in preview, yeah. but it's available to anybody. Mm -hmm. So anybody can do it now. And if you read the last sentence of the blog post, it says, available in preview for free, pricing will be set when it goes to GA. So my thoughts on that are is if you'd like to do it, you should do it fast now. so that you can be their use case before they charge you money for it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about um, about that one. I I don't know. There's, there's pros and cons. I'm sure there's a lot of details. I haven't seen a specific SLA around what happens when you ship the data to them or different things like that. So I, you know, before you go shipping hard drives to anybody, I'm sure you should probably ask the legal department. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Have you read any more about that, or know anybody that's done it? Uh, no, I haven't, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be curious about the encryption capability because yeah. in order for me to ship a hard drive, I want it to be BitLocker encrypted, and how do I ship the keys and things of that nature? Uh, there's some complication around that. 
and I think uh, it's going to be fun to play with a little bit. Um, you know, there, there are different ways of, of hashing that out, but I think BitLocker is probably going to be the one that Microsoft's going to prefer. Uh, I am encouraged by the ability to have both methodologies. One is, you know, be able to upload at your PST. Yeah. Uh, for those people who have smaller PSTs, for those who have smaller a, business. you know, yep. two gigs or under, that's really maybe not that bad. But right. the, the person who has 10 gigs worth of data that, you know, and every person in their company, yeah, stick that on a hard drive and ship that off and let them do the import for you is yeah. definitely, I think, a better way to go. Yeah. I think it's also cool though because like I wonder how much of this stuff has come out of uh, the fast track that they did for migration. So they've said all along we're offering the fast track offering, which fast track, this particular fast track offering for those that are unaware of it, where if you were 150 seats or higher, Microsoft would basically migrate you in your email into Office 365 at no additional cost. And they put a lot of dedicated engineering time on it. So the same people that are responsible for building out the tools inside of Office 365 were responsible for supporting it. And if I was on the team building the migration tools, I was having to actually do the migration. And the end result of that was supposed to be um, additional tools and ways for us to import data into it. And I think it's really interesting between this and then also the announcements last week at Ignite about the migration and the APIs and stuff like that to do migration, I have to wonder how much of this has come from them, you know, eating their own dog, dog food, drinking their own wine, you yeah. know, whatever, whatever those statements are. Um, so I think it's very interesting. So this does address a major pain point. Uh, getting into Office 365 is maybe not the easiest thing in the world. So um, this definitely helps definitely helps with that. You have to wonder whether the option one is actually going off to the Azure Blob Storage the same way that we are with, uh, with SharePoint migration. So yeah, I don't know. No, no, no real detail in the blog post about that. Yeah, nothing, I'm, I'm nothing too detailed, but very cool. I definitely say something worth, um, worth trying out. And for smaller orgs that are just getting started, it's a great option, um, but definitely worth something to check out. All right, next one. Power Query wins it again. Power Query is the most updated product inside of the Microsoft stack. This beast, I think they like, how can we break up one update into at least 10 bullet points? Mm -hmm. Because every month, they have a ton more updates. Um, and so that team is just very busy. So I think either that team is just like awesome at what they do, or nobody realizes that team exists. And so that team is just left to themselves where they're able to update software like every day, I think they're pushing a new build for this product. It's kind of crazy. But none of it, um, I don't know. There's so many updates that I don't know that any of it's like, whoa! So the, if you go and, watch, and look at the blog post uh, and you go click on the, the video, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, uh, I, I sent an email to John White on, on, I guess it was Tuesday when I saw this. I watched it. and. Uh, I think that the Power, Power Query team is getting a little rich with their uh, uh, with, with their, with their <laughs> grandioseness because it's this melodic background. It's talking about homelessness in the state of Washington, and so it's got this like audio track to it. There's no words. It's just this. You know, <laughs> as, as you're flying around, power is you know, looking at power map, and you're flying around, and you just listen. Da -da 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 -da. I'm not going to sing anymore. Oh, but, thank you. Yeah, thank sorry. You. The but, audience is Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but it was, it's, the, the improvements that they're making are coming very rapidly. It, you know, the fact that, uh, I, we all know that they're there. We know you're there. Keep doing this, but we know you're there. Um, all of the cool stuff that we're seeing coming out for Power Query is, you know, all coming directly as, as a result of the teams finally coming together, in my opinion, and going, oh, wow, we have one avenue to actually push this stuff now. And with Power BI being what it is, right. and with Power Query be, being the way that we're going to get that data in, they've adopted one methodology instead of the multiple that we've had in the past. Uh, with Power View being the way that we're visualizing using, you know, using all of this and with Power Query being the engine behind. So the stuff that we're starting to see is starting to rip pieces out of what we were doing with Power Pivot before right. and pushing it out into a better way of doing it and actually something more executable. Um, the things that are in here support for ADFS authentication services, huge stuff around authentication, the alternative of the alternate Windows credentials. Uh, I figure out how to get my laptop to not go to sleep after five minutes. <laughs> um, you know, some of the new transformation stuff. So some of the things that are in here, if you take a look at it, oh, the OData support, 
there's a lot that they're talking to that are specifically talking about authentication in this uh, avenue. So lots of really cool stuff. Um, I'm excited by it. I've already installed it and started playing with it. Um, Power Query for me is one of those stepping stones to, to all the BI goodness that we really want to see. Um, and it's how we get data in. So anyway. Very cool. I like Very it. Very cool. He likes it. It gets Jason's uh, two thumbs of approval. All right. Next up, OneNote. Of course, starting today, you can search handwritten notes in OneDrive in OneNote notebooks, just like you can search through text and text with images. So if you were to scribble and handwrite, you could search. Um, I think I believe it when I see it. Yeah, my handwriting is horrible. I know, I was looking so. at you because your handwriting yeah. is horrible. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it could be kind of comical. It, it, I'm, I'm, <laughs> my, my parents always expected I was going to be a doctor as a result, uh, you know, because of how bad my handwriting was. It just doesn't, that never, never My out. mom is a nurse, and when she was the director of a OBGYN unit, she had to go to handwriting class because her handwriting was too easy, mm -hmm. and so it was too easy to be copied and fraudulent, so she had to go to a class to learn how to make a different signature. Wow. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm hopeful that yeah. this is something, you know, for students and, you know, for people who take a lot of handwritten notes. I don't have a surface, as you do. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't write on a tablet at all. Uh, yeah. So for me, I, it, it's not as important. Um, the thing that I do like that I have found useful is uh, being able to use Office Lens and taking pictures yeah. of, of text, that then that, that can be converted. Now it, that it can be more searchable yeah, once true. you convert that's that true. way. A little bit different, um, but even so, it's still uh, the, the, there are pieces there that I, I, I'm, I'll be interested to see how good your handwriting has to be in order for it. Yeah. So then the other interesting one that I think is uh, OneNote is now supported on the Apple Watch. If in the wild I happen to see anyone wearing an Apple Watch mm -hmm. and using OneNote, mm -hmm. I'm going to just like bow down and worship them because I'm pretty sure that the people that are cool enough to have Apple Watches right now are not using OneNote. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I saw my first one in the wild this weekend. We went to a, uh, a little uh, crafts fair uh, up in New Hampshire. A craft fair? A craft fair. And at the 4-H <laughs> booth, no less, one of, the, one of the nice ladies there that was holding a bunny also happened to have an Apple Watch on. Did she know she had she an Apple Watch on? She knew she had an Apple Watch on because that, she had to keep twisting her arms so that the bunny wasn't covering the Apple Watch so that you know she could show off her app. It was, okay. it was impressive. Anybody in the audience have an Apple Watch? Lyman might have an Apple Watch. She's cool enough to have one. Yeah. He's probably going to be mad at me that I ask him now, but he is cool enough to He's have one. Cool enough, yeah. Dan might have an Apple Watch. No, no, no. Dan has a band. Dan's, Dan's a band man. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh -huh. But if anybody in the audience has an Apple Watch, let me know. I will give you a special prize to the first person that sends me a picture of them using their Apple Watch. And one note, one note. With one note, yes. You'll get a bottle of my favorite wine or something, and I will totally, totally, uh, I'll make good on that promise. First one I see. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Yeah, okay, you have the you have that in there. So, so there is that, and then there is the audio recording for one night for Mac. Okay, this is one where the different platforms are catching up with each other. Mm -hmm. So now you can use OneNote to record um, audio recordings and stuff like that from OneNote. Now you could do that before on other platforms. But you couldn't do it on the Mac. So that's another update update that is there, and so that's a good one. Um, ooh, Trent says he sees. Microsoft speakers, yeah, it's probably Jeremy's sake. If you, uh, think, you don't think Jeremy's sake? No, Jeremy that much? did not buy one. I, yeah. Interesting, interesting. He's waiting for V2. So. Yeah, um, yeah, Trent's right. Like, Microsoft people that are running Apple Watches are probably using OneNote. And I'll probably be proven wrong. I'm sure there's probably all the time. It's probably yeah, somebody in Redmond is going to send you a picture from the, uh, from the OneNote team just so that they can oh, yeah. get their. Uh, the so OneNote team's got to be making a cool video about it, right? I would like, hope so. if you guys haven't seen it, um, you guys need to look up the One More Day, um, the parody that the OneNote team did. It's called I'm One 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 More Note or something like that, and it's from Les Mis, and they sing a song and they're dancing around. I mean, it's it's brilliant, um, but you we totally might, have to. Yeah, we might that have up. to figure out how we can play that on the show yes, next it, time because that's totally, awesome. I want to see it. Totally brilliant. 
Um, but that's kind of fun. So when they're, they're again making cool strides, I can't wait for them all to just be the same. Mm -hmm. I think with schools and stuff like that coming in, they're going to have to be um, the same. But they're getting very close to having all the same parity features. All right. So this next one is pretty cool, too. I like this. So from Outlook Web App and OneDrive for Business, you can save attachments directly to OneDrive for Business. And you get guidance when you're sharing large files, which basically means if I have an attachment that's bigger, I could have used this today, by the way, internally, because I tried to send an email that was, you know, an attachment that was bigger than what should have been there. Mm -hmm. But really what it's going to do is if you try to send something that's bigger than your limits, it's going to say, hey, why don't you put this here in OneDrive and I'll replace it with a link. And it's a very beautiful thing. Um, so I think that that's cool. It's very pleasing guidance. What I mean by that is the user pop-up doesn't annoy me. Like, yeah. it makes sense. It's very polite um, as well. It's polite. Yeah. Pleasing, polite, kind of the same thing, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Now, the downside is, is it's not in Outlook 2013 at this point. It is only for uh, the Outlook web app. Yeah. Uh, now, if you downloaded and started playing with the Outlook 2016, this is where I first saw it, uh, they're starting to have that where yeah. you have the ability to attach from OneDrive for Business as well directly, which is a really nice thing. It shows you your last, for both uh, OneDrive and OneDrive for Business, when you go to do an attachment, it offers you a, to select something from your the last things that you've done in OneDrive and OneDrive for Business. So that's in public preview now. So the yeah. tw Office 2016, that was a, you know, my favorite feature um, there. So. Phil had a question for us. He says, when is OneDrive for Business going to be available for the Mac platform? Do you know the answer to that? I know wasn't it in that coming soon bucket or yeah. on the roadmap, but I don't know that I have a date for that. Uh, Phil, uh, I've been hearing different things and I've yeah. sort of given up hope myself for a oh, little bit. Man. I know it's a bad thing, but I, I've stopped worrying about it on my Mac. Uh, I'll tell you what, let, let us, you know, may, maybe next show you can have an answer that where, where we can take a look and see if we can find. Uh, but I've been hearing it for so long that uh, I'm hopeful. Well, it says it's here. Here's a get the free well, that's app. For OneDrive. That's not OneDrive for Business. They're different. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. Problem. Yeah, okay. So you can have it for OneDrive, but OneDrive for Business is still lagging behind. So um, They'll get there. I just don't know when yeah, they're going to get there. There must be something. Here's something. Okay, so any news? I don't see any update for it, but we can definitely put that um, to the list of questions that we can, um, I can try to get a question, try to get that one answered. Yeah. And you can also go out to the Office 365 uh, Yammer network and post the question as well. Yeah. Uh, and you know, m mention that uh, that I've given up hope if you want, and uh, we'll see how many times I get yelled at for that one. Uh, but <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's it's worth poking as frequently as you'd like until you get an answer that you can appreciate. Yeah. And Phil, if you're part of the the network. Um, you can start a thread and copy Jason and I, or you can mm -hmm. private message us your um, email, and we can try to follow up with you um, once we know. I just Absolutely. don't know the final. Sorry, I don't know the final answer to that one. Um, all right, what else That's do really we have really coming? Ooh, clutter. Um, so clutter has been um, a very cool thing. Um, basically cleans up the clutter in your inbox and gets you less stuff, highlights what's important to you. But they've made some improvements and they've been telling us, and what I think is cool about this is that they've been telling us over and over again how they are going to roll things out as an MVP and then um, after they get through that, they're going to add new features to it. And in most cases, all of the administrative features come post-MVP. So this is another example of this. And for those that might not be familiar with it, MVP is minimally viable product. Um, so they rolled out clutter. And now they're following up with PowerShell commands to actually turn it off and on, which is awesome. So it's not all on. It's not all off. Administrators can control that. And then they've also improved um, the email notifications that go out to people. So like the screenshot that we have here is actually a pretty cool, pretty cool screenshot. And it's showing, like, are these types of things important, yes or no, and different things like that. And so it's kind of allowing people to give input into that. So I have not used Office 365 email on a scale enough where clutter makes sense. Like I just don't get a lot of junk in there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. I or do. Uh, it takes a little bit of time for it to learn the algorithms that you want. You have to throw enough stuff into clutter. 
uh, at the beginning. Right. Uh, but now I don't see the notifications for my daily digest for Yammer anymore. And, and I left those things out specifically with the intention of being able to see that stuff. Um, so it does learn the algorithms, uh, but it's definitely something you have to go in and check. Uh, yeah. I think it's a I think it's a good concept. Um, I wish that they could just take the algorithm that they have for uh, the Outlook, what used to be a Compli, uh, and just yeah. apply that to uh, to be able to have a focused inbox uh, versus an unfocused inbox. Um, that for me was one of the bigger things about Outlook formerly a Compli on the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, as an iPhone user, I really love that feature. Unfortunately, I can't use it corporately. Um, because it still holds with AWS and things like that, or you know, et cetera. But um, that that's what I'm hoping Clutter actually turns into long term yeah. is the ability to really have those things more of what's really important to you. I yeah, think it's uh, for me as a reverse of what I'd like to see. So yeah, very cool. And our last update um, for today is the Office Android Phone preview is now available. So if you have an Android phone. You can put Office on it and do the preview. You have an iPhone, right? I have an iPhone. Yeah, I, I, there, there, there are bad juju in my world around uh, Android. I'm not an Android fan at all. Um, so I've been a Windows phone user for a long time. I've just cut down to only carrying one phone, so I just have my, my iPhone at this point. But uh, I think it's great that, uh, that Microsoft is being nice to the Android phone community. I think that's, that's wonderful. Uh, but I don't have phone allegiance right now. I um, was just, well, I guess I still do. I guess I'm still Windows Phone Allegiant. But I'm I'm teetering on that fence. Mm -hmm. But before I go get an iPhone or an Android, I'm pretty sure my husband is not going to let me get an iPhone. So before I go get a different phone, mm -hmm. I'm giving Windows 10. They've got, like, one shot. Well, wait for a while, me. then. <laughs> I know. I know. The current build is not at all. Oh, well, yeah, the current so. build, I think, uh, we were going to put it on our phones, and Corey put it on his phone, and we were getting ready to push the button on mine, and he's like, nope, 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 and he took it off immediately. Yeah. So he's still running one of his, uh, we might have a lot of tele. We have like a lot of telephones around the house that don't have any cell signal on them. So they're just little Wi-Fi devices, and so he's got one that he was uh, playing with that he put Ten on, and it was not. I will say I do like uh, 10, 10078 for uh, for the Win for the for the Win Ten platform. I run it on my Surface Pro, and it's great. Uh, get ready to dual boot my Mac uh, to be able to do put it on there. I'm I'm a big fan. I think that Windows Ten is going to be spectacular. When I got here and they handed me my, my machine, it's a Windows Seven machine. I went and had it reimaged, and they said, "Well, what would you like?" I said, "Can I have Windows 10?" They said, "No." But uh, <laughs> I was hoping. I was so hoping, at least to try. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. so I'm on eight one still for corporate. But uh, all of my Windows machines that are not corporate or that are not servers as well are all on Windows 10 and running on the fast ring, and I've had great success. The phone platform, unfortunately, uh, and uh, Jim Wilcox, who's one of my co-organizers for the. Uh, uh, New Hampshire SharePoint uh, user group uh, is a big Windows Phone guy, and he keeps telling me that it's not Windows Phone anymore; it's Windows 10 Mobile. And I, I don't care. So don't phone running it Windows is a Windows I, Phone. I haven't put Windows 10 on my Surface either, and I thought you did have a Surface. I have a Surface Pro, not the. Uh, oh, not the. Yeah, and I lost the pen for that thing so long I ago. I lost my pen last week at Ignite. I am such a sad, sad person. Oh. Anyway, my. Um, husband put Windows 10 on the surface and mm -hmm. his battery life went from like eight hours to like three and a half. Ooh. And I'm like, uh, no thank you. And it gets really hot. Mm -hmm. So I am. Um, yeah, they're still tweaking. It, it's going to get there yeah. though. Um, so lots of good stuff coming in that in that realm. Yeah. Tanya um, said she saw a lot of uh, demos at Ignite and got really excited but wants to see a stable version. Yes, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. And until uh, it, it's fun being married to somebody in the industry as well, especially somebody who's like kind of a gadget freak because I'm not. I don't really care about gadgets. Mm -hmm. And so usually um, I call him my help desk. And when it's help desk approved, just like corporate America, mm -hmm. my house has got his help desk. And when it's help desk approved, he'll, he'll yeah. put it online. But for the meantime, I just don't. Yes, he, he and I geek out uh, yeah. on, on, on that type of stuff on a regular basis. It's a lot of fun. I just want uh, it to work. Yeah. And right now, like a three hour battery just doesn't work for my stuff. Yeah, he sent me over the uh, how to get Windows 10 on my Raspberry Pi. So uh, He's so excited about these Raspberry Pi. Yes. 
they gave them away at Ignite in the office booth, and he built like like just random stuff with this Raspberry Pi. I'm like, whatever, dude. Right. Whatever makes you happy. Um, so, not, not something you can run with Office yeah. 365 yet, but hopefully at some point we'll be able to program some fun to... Uh, Why do you need to run Office 365? I would like to be high. able to have it to where I can just watch your sways from, you know, from anywhere. Just scroll through your sways. <laughs> that, that would be like, just flip over to my HDMI and I can just have Jen's sways. Just, yes, a just Jen, scroll through them. a Jen sway app. You heard it here first, hey, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, I community. <laughs> we, we need that, uh, that Raspberry Pi a Gen Sway app for uh, for Raspberry Pi. So. Too funny, too funny. All right, so we had, uh, I kind of like to point you guys to fun case studies when we see them. Um, so the Lotus F1 team journey, um, they did a case study on what they have done to get into Office 365. I am not sure, um, I'm not sure if the Office team is more excited that <laughs> somebody had a successful Office 365 implementation mm -hmm. or that it's the Formula One team. So yeah. I'm just saying, um, but you can geek out with them. Um, I watched Chris and CJ post some pictures of it while yeah. they were filming this and it was really exciting. So the Office Mechanics, it is one of the best series. If you want to get information straight from Microsoft, blue badge information, which means you can count on everything they say, you don't always get the real perspective. You don't get the, you know, Jen and Jason commentary, but you get the Microsoft Blue Badge, um, Office Mechanics is going to be absolutely your place to go. And so Jeremy uh, kind of heads up those shows and different things like that. So they have a great case study out there, and that just links over to the YouTube video in their yeah. channel that they posted. So. And one of our colleagues, Adam, watched the stuff this morning and thought that was pretty cool. So uh, yeah. definitely go check that out. I've not had a chance to watch it yet. I've, I've heard about it from, from our friends over at Microsoft, but uh, I've not had an opportunity to actually go watch the video myself. Yeah, I'm for, um, for those of you guys, there's a, a huge core group of the, I don't know if it's a huge core group, a big core group of the, the people on the product team that are huge Formula One fans, and they always get together and go to the races, and so I'm sure this was a purely geeking out <laughs> moment for them, but they loved yeah. sure of it. So, um, lots of fun, lots of fun. Okay, so what else do we have here going on? Oh, this one was an interesting one. I thought that we could chat through this one. They came out with a blog post um, that they basically said, hey, here's a small business guide to securing your email. Um, and they basically just in the email listed seven things um, that you could do to build out a plan. And I guess if you did not have a secure email plan mm -hmm. or any type of governance and you were a small business, you... Uh, I guess could sit down with these seven and build a plan and make a plan and and go with it. Or at least you could Google with Bing and find out what these words mean because you know I mean, if you didn't have any plan for it, yeah. this is a good place to start. Of this is not a deep detailed explanation of here's how you do encryption for email or you know right. or how to you know secure what what is a secure password. It's just simply yeah. the guidance around what should you be doing. And, and it, the blog post does point into how you could change some of those settings inside mm -hmm. of Office 365 specifically. Um, but, but I think, you know, I, the reason I brought it up here, and I don't know how many people in the audience are actually from a small business, so um, poor Lyman, he asked me every week if I have polls that I want to do, and that would have been a great poll to do, but I didn't think of it. So in the chat window, let us know if you're part of a small business or if you have a plan um, similar to these types of things. I think everyone should have a plan right now. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that a lot of small businesses um, do. It's so very easy right now to get, um, I don't know, it, it's risky right now, just anything, with yeah. mobile devices and everyone having them. So, I mean, in addition to some of these things, you've got mobile device management that you can do in the new features that are coming with Office 365 and different things like that. So. Um, have you spent much time with any companies going through and building out these plans? Or I've definitely talked to a lot of folks about security being, you know, formerly, a, you know, way back in the, you know, way back in the day, uh, a former security guy. Uh, yeah. Definitely is an interest in me to make sure that, you know, we use good practices around security. Um, you know. I worked in healthcare for a long yeah. time, so following HIPAA guidance and things like that. So, you know, it's important to secure your data and make sure that you're not 
posting things you really shouldn't, PHI, PII, yeah, those types definitely. of things getting out, you know, social security numbers, credit card numbers. If you're a business, that's a crippling thing. Somebody yeah. gets that information and, you know, you're, you're in a lot of hot water. So um, the new DLP features that, you know, they, they've got baked into Office 365, yeah. that, which is also, there's still stuff, more stuff coming yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. 51 algorithms that they've got out there that they're already checking for. Um, really good stuff. Um, so email security starts with informed users. No matter what you do, it's, it has to start with a, yeah. a human to human plan. Uh, you have to put something in place in order to, you know, if you are in a regulated industry, you have to have yes. some form of, uh, of algorithmic plan as well. But at the very basic, don't tape your, you know, password up under your keyboard and, you know, and then th those types of things are, yeah. should, you know, that we take for granted today. Really, now we really have to go back and revisit them because we're in an age where people aren't thinking about it anymore because we've gone past that point where it's being reinforced to people. And, uh, you know, I worked with a defense contractor where every year you went through and you had to recertify that you know what mail security yes. is and things of that nature. Things like that are important to make sure that we do. So. Yes, most definitely. So this is interesting. If you do not have um, a plan in place or you haven't really thought through it, this is a great um, resource to get you guys started. So, we are reaching the end of today's show, so if you guys have any questions, go ahead and post them into the um, chat window, and, and you guys can post that there, and then... Um, and Phil, yes, you can quote me on I've given up hope on seeing a OneDrive for Business for Mac client. Yes. And Feel free. That was my statement. Don't, don't sully Jen's name with it, but yes, you can... You can absolutely quote me on that. Um, I, I'd love to have hope again on that. So let's, you know, maybe we can poke enough bears. Yeah, it get looks an answer, like uh, so. one of our coworkers, Adam, uh, sent over a link on some of the updates, and it looks like they haven't updated anything since January. Um, so basically, there hasn't really been an update um, on the post. But Ruben, if you are going to, um, if you're going to post a question in Yammer. The guy you want to copy is Ruben Kripner, and um, yep. Phil, we can post that in there for you too. Like I said, if you want to finish your folk, we can do that. And then... And the um, other side of it is, I, I have not watched every video from Ignite yet, or Build. I'm hopeful that someday I'll make it through all, you know, you 800 gigs of... No, I'm, I'm lying. Um, but, you know, that it might be worth going and checking and seeing if there was a one a OneDrive for Business uh, roadmap session. Forget that. Ignite video stuff, I'm going to go watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, I heard Mad Men ended this weekend, so I have to go I watched, binge watch I've that. I've never but watched Mad Men. I, I watched from up to about season three or four, and so there's another bunch of seasons that I need to go uh, watch. So I'm not on Game of Thrones TV. yet. So I watch some of the Ignite content, but yes. not so much that I can't watch regular TV. Because there's just only so much. I'm Microsoft traveling, so can suck up. Yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> traveling, so I don't have a DVR <laughs> handy, so I have to watch something. And after I finish reading, listening to all my podcasts. Yeah. All, right, all right, all right. So the other question um, was when you are in um, Office 365, you can actually go when you can download the client. It looks like you can also download the preview. It actually says try the next version of Office and lets people download the 2016 preview wow. before its release. Um, I didn't realize that this was necessarily showing up on this page this way. I'm going to go ask a couple people about it and see. Um, Which tenant are you in? I'm in just a standard tenant. Wow, that's awesome. So the thing I'd say is I've been running the 2016 preview next to the 2013 preview, and I really haven't had too many issues. I've, yeah. um, Skype for Business uh, is very unhappy right now on my machine, so I think I need to get an update for it. Um, but other than that, I've been able to run them all side by side, and it I haven't had any issues with it. I can see how this can be kind of confusing. Um, for some of your users and doing that. I know Mark was asking, Mark, are you getting people downloading and having two copies, or are you just getting people on this page unsure of what to do? I tried to do a quick search to see if you could turn it off, um, but I didn't find anything right away um, of where you could do that. I'd be surprised if they let you turn that off because they're very much pushing a open free world where everyone has the latest version of everything. 
I would imagine that's one because you can turn off the ability to actually let them download it too. So I imagine there has to be yeah, something. Yeah, probably. I wonder if we can say what they could. Um, so we can we can look into that as well. So yeah. Um, but yeah, the 2016 bits, I've had no problems uh, at this point. I haven't yeah. lost anything. I've had any crashes. Um, no, me either. I do, you know, if you're going to use it, uh, I do everybody a favor, make sure you use the uh, smiley face, frowny face yeah. options. Give feedback. Uh, make sure that you turn on the ability for them to see and collect feedback, the CIEP functionality. It's the only way they're going to see uh, what we're doing and, uh, you know, from a, an algorithmic perspective of, you know, they're not going to see what you did. They're going yeah. to see more people are doing this, so we need to invest more in this uh, type of, uh, of thing. And also, when you do have crashes or if you have failures, they can see those types of things. It's important for them to get that feedback uh, from us because it's the only way it's going to improve. So. Yeah. I, and I heard Mark saying that we have to support the broken installs, and I totally get that. Yeah. Um, I There's got to be a way to turn it off. I just don't know off the top of my head um, what it is. So we will have to, I can definitely dig into that. I didn't realize it had showed up there because honestly, after I installed the software from there, I just went to close. I mean, I had the preview before they put it there. Yeah. So I had just gone and downloaded it. So um, just, poor Mark, he came here to ask a question and we're just learning from him. Yes, so, I'm yeah. telling you. And, uh -huh. uh, and Trent, I do agree, Gotham's great. I, I, uh, I had to stop watching it for a while because I've been traveling too much and I, the, my problem is that I record up to five shows, and if I've missed that five-show window, I've missed the whole rest of a season because I can't go watch just the end. So I'll be binge watching. Why don't you record more than five shows? Because there's, then there's not enough space for Sesame Street and uh, Odd Squad okay. and all of those things for the kids because that's important too. So I need to just get my own DVR at home that's just for me. So I don't, you know, I, as we move, my, I might have to, I might have to invest in that. So. <laughs> You funny don't, too. Don't tell Jill. So. Um, it's you said it on the record. Yeah, um, she won't. No she, 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 has, she hasn't watched any of my geek stuff. So. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Do you have any other questions for us today? We will be back uh, next week, and um, we're going to do a format of doing the first half of the show, uh, going through the updates and different things like that, and then one of the demos that I did at Ignite that got a lot of um, feedback was doing um, reoccurring emails, so looping emails through a workflow inside of SharePoint Designer 2013, so you could send like a weekly reminder to go do X and Y. So I'm going to take the second half of the show next week, I'm sorry, in two weeks, June um, 3rd? Yep. June 3rd. June 3rd is the next show, I'm going to do the demo then. Um, Lyman is so good. So behind the scenes, there is a team of people that make this awesome. Uh, Lyman and Eric, especially, they make every show we do like so wonderful. And if it wasn't for them, we would not be able to do these shows. And they keep me in line, and I love it. Um, but June 3rd, I'm going to be doing that demo as well as just going over updates and different things like that. So it should be a pretty fun show. Um, and so there we go. So I don't see um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Mark, it's interesting that you have a ticket open with Premier Support, which means it's probably there's, yeah, there's probably not a way to have that. Well, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go poke that bear because yeah. that could make a big mess. So I'm gonna go poke that one a little bit. So see what I can find it out at least. So. Um, and again, Mark, if you want to private chat us or private chat us your email, I'm happy to share with you what I actually do find out when I go digging around. Um, so I think if you go down to questions for pre presenter, I think there's a way that you can send it to just the presenters or send it privately. Um, and I will get your email and then we can um, follow up with you for that. Okay, awesome. So perfect. I got it, Mike. Or I'm sorry, I got it, Mark. I will. Uh, loop you in with that. So awesome guys. Well you guys have a great um, a great rest of the day. Lyman if you can leave the chat window up just so we can copy that email long enough, I'd appreciate that. And then we can call it um, we can call it a day. Thank you guys. Thanks guys.